What's going on with you? Hey, how are you doing? Um, I I want to say sluggish, but I, is I'm really not sluggish. Yeah. I had to go to work, but I um I wound up like I said coming across your page. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly when it was, but I was just like, I think it was my homeboy Naughty because I met him through Derek Grace. Okay. I was like, how did I start following you? I don't know, but okay. What happened was I I. I started, uh, I think your post, one of your posts came up. Mm -hmm. Like, man, this, this shit make a lot of sense. Excuse my friends. I was like, this shit make a lot of sense. Right. And why isn't anybody attacking it? But I recently heard some people speaking on the children and on the youth as far as a therapy standpoint. I was mm -hmm. like, man, let me reach out to this woman to see if she'll hop on, you know, and do a podcast with me. So yeah. here we are today. Yeah, I'm glad you did. I mean, it's a it's a definitely a topic that has to be discussed. I mean, you know, they are the future. So if we are not getting a hold of kind of what's and especially during this whole pandemic, but just being able to really like tap into the emotional um, side of that, the behavior side, um, just in general, and then of course whatever is going to out, be an outcome of this pandemic. Um, it's necessary for us to be able to even like grow as a culture, to be able to even just be able to maintain, you know, and um, and that's why I'm pushing it heavy now. Um, but I've been doing this. I mean, this is something that I've been doing for, for a while. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, starting things off, I am art architect, Alexis Alton. Yes thankful you know what i mean again to have you on so appreciate it yes thank you just give give a brief a brief intro, introduction of you know who you are and what you do sure so i am a uh licensed social worker that's my background i went to um uh, westchester university for my bachelor's of social work and then i actually and that's in westchester pennsylvania okay. uh, some people think it's in new york but it's in uh it's actually the one in pennsylvania and then I went to um, the one and only Howard University yeah. um, for my master's in social work. So my background is all things social work, um, but I am a licensed therapist currently uh, in my, my job now. Been working with children and families um, for about 15 years. My, I started at a residential treatment facility for girls um, okay. while I was still in school. So the rest of my kind of background experience has been um, really in the home, um, doing like crisis management or just like behavior type management, um, individual therapy, family therapy. I do work with adults right now doing substance abuse um, groups. So I kind of have a wide variety, but my main focus um, definitely has been uh, the children and uh, youth. Okay. so. Did someone or something inspire you to become a therapist? Like, was it was it an initial thing or what What kind of transpired? So when I went to school, um, when I went to college, um, I knew, I kind of I kind of was like forced in a sense. Like I knew I needed to do something with my life. So I, I went, but my sister, my older sister actually is a social worker. So she kind of, um, inspired me to do it. I knew I always wanted to work with children, but I never wanted to be a teacher yeah. in the traditional sense. But yeah. in essence, I am a teacher, um, but just not in the traditional sense. So I felt like social work was the next best field to get into. Uh, and it's also very broad. So it's, you know, I can work in hospitals or jails or, uh, you know, schools, um, which I currently work in a school. Well, of course, not at the moment, but um, I do work in a school. So it's it's um a very broad um uh, broad field that you can kind of go into. So I, I like that because I needed something that was going to be different. I didn't want to be in the same kind of mundane, monotonous um job every single day. So it fit for me. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So I um I <clears throat> took this post down, but you you made a post. I don't know if it was in your story or whatnot, but it said, uh, "Stop cursing at your kids. Stop mm -hmm. calling them dumb and stupid. 
stop attacking their character, stop mentally abusing them. Mental abuse lasts sometimes for lifetimes. Yeah. So, yes. um, you know, just kind of expound, you know, what you, what it, what the post was saying or whatnot. Cause it, I mean, it, like I said, it, it caught me because I went through, um, I went through this, I say a therapeutic journey called Inward Journey. Okay. But one of my, um, I also had a teacher who was a dictionary teacher. Mm -hmm. He would always say like, uh, don't, don't spank the children. So he came out with a book and he would always talk to us. And when he would talk to, talk to us, it, you know, a lot of things started making sense the way he was mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. Because when I look at a child, it's just like a small person. Yeah, absolutely. That's how I, that's how I look at children because mm -hmm. eventually they're going to grow up. They already have their own com ways of communicating with right. each other verbally. Right. And they see they see things just like adults do too, so why mm -hmm. not expect it? Right. So you're absolutely right. I mean, um kids don't they don't know anything, so their their first kind of role models are their parents or caregivers whoever is raising them. And they are like a sponge. So anything that you say, do, um, they will soak it up, whether it's a, it's good or bad. So as far as like the mental abuse, I didn't actually make that post, but it, it definitely is true. And everything that um, that it that it stands for is the mental abuse, or or just being able to speak life. Um, you know, and the opposite, of course, is is something that um, can, you could speak fear, I guess, could be maybe the opposite of that, but speaking life into a young person will definitely determine the outcome of everything, you know, how they interact with, with their peers, how they interact with, with teachers if they, you know, when they go to school, um, their self-esteem, how they, of course, feel about themselves, how they um, respond to different situations. I mean, it is like, that is, um, you know, the, a, a very big part of um, molding a child or, or how they're going to be. You, you can tell by their parents, of course. And yeah. it is, is definitely um, a, a generational kind of uh, behavior, right? So if, if nobody saying, knows... Saying continuous? Absolutely. So nobody knows how to parent. There, of course, there's no parenting manual, but... Oh. You know, you learn from either your parents or images or things that you see or, or what have you, and um, you pass that along to your children, whether it's good or bad. I mean, and the mental abuse is, is definitely long lasting um, because that can be embedded, right? Physical abuse, I mean, the pain goes away and not saying that it doesn't affect them, but the mental abuse, um, it has a way of sticking to them especially if the child is not able to really, um, well, one, understand what that means, and then two, um, kind of combat. Like, you know, my parent is saying this, or, but they're supposed to love me. And, you know, it's very confusing to a child, um, but it definitely molds them into um, whoever, you know, um, whatever. And they then can then show that to other people. Um, it's, and that's how the kind of the cycle continues, um, because then they will, whether young or old, they'll be able to, they'll, I should say, they will interact with their peers um, in the same manner that their parents or caregivers are as well. So then, like I said, that's how the cycle um, continues. So, mm -hmm. so the, I, the, the name of the book came to me, it's called Violence in the Promised Land. Okay. So it um now it's making me think about images that, you know, we grow up seeing on TV or even just mm -hmm. around in life. It's like these things are stored within us. Yeah. These are, are vivid images played through our minds every mm -hmm. day. So I can I can see what you mean by that uh, by that post. And it absolutely yeah. Also, the post made me think about my approach to my brother. Mm -hmm. I was I was never really abusive towards him. Okay. But in a sense, it was more like mental toughness and I use that frame of mind with basketball mm, so okay. I never I never allowed him to beat me when we were growing up he mm -hmm. I, I'm about to turn 39 it's a uh, Sunday okay so it wasn't until I was like maybe 33 that I, I let him beat well I'm not gonna say let me beat my ass okay. uh -huh. so but what I was 
what I was trying to show him and what I was trying to bring him along to is playing against guys older than him so he could get better. But mm -hmm. I think it kind of um, – I don't think it ruined him or anything. I think he took the mental toughness and added it into himself on another level other than what I saw, which was business. He okay. Taking that mental toughness in the business versus – putting it on a basketball court and working and working and working out towards gotcha. it. And with that mental toughness, were you able to have those conversations like, you know, I'm doing this because, or I want this for you, you know, because well, yeah, that's important as well to have those conversations. Well, as we progressed, I think as we got older, the communication, mm -hmm. the communication got better because okay. at times it was hard. I'm not going mm -hmm. to sit here and lie. Cause I'm trying to tell a, a younger, a guy three years younger than me. Mm -hmm. like, or like, hey, bro, I'm trying to get you to, to be better than me. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm approaching the game, but that's why I'm approaching you, how I'm approaching you. It's, okay. not, it's not that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to beat you. I know that if I dominate you, when you get out here and play on the court, whoever we play up against and match up against, right. you're going to destroy them. So I, I think it was not knowing how to communicate that at that time. Mm -hmm. But now as we've gotten older, the communication is is – it's genuine to a point where it's almost like I'm talking to myself. Good. Yeah. Whether, whether it's a book that I, I come across, whether it's some technology or information that I come across. And even mm -hmm. now I'm starting to really build a bridge with my sister too. So it's just. Good. I, I see. Um, Good. And that healing part, it, it sounds like, of course, it sounds like what you're doing with your sister, that healing part is for you. You know, I, um, my sister, my, um, older sister uh, we're three years apart and I I think just kind of growing up we we um we went at it you know just hey, um, can I say he was crazy <laughs> my brother my brother and sister fought almost every day and they like gotcha. they like a year and five days apart so we all oh, wow, three okay are, we all three are like five days apart literally and I'm like gotcha crazy. yeah so just with that you know that just kind of um it made me angry inside. And I knew that just kind of going through the social work programs and stuff, you really have to look within and work through that because you can't, of course, help anybody unless um, you help yourself. So I had to really forgive um, her, whether I wanted to or not, and heal within myself so that I can move forward. And we have a really good relationship now um, over the last, uh, I would say like at least eight to 10 years or so because I was just like, I'm not going to let her affect me. And that was something I had to really kind of grow into and, and be like, I am in control of my happiness and my feelings and all of that. And I, and I have to let that part go so I can move forward. Yeah. I think, yeah. I feel like part of me, when I went through this, uh, like I said, this, I don't, I don't know how I would, would say it, but it was a thing called inward journey. And it's like, yeah. just one of the approaches where we had to actually like hug a tree okay i was like man what the hell what the fuck is this uh, uh -huh. but, but it's like me being a, a taurus and then it's like i think it grounded me it helped me understand myself yeah once we had to go through that process and mm -hmm. then like processing and then it was some whole other stuff going on on the tree where it was like okay this reminds me of myself mm -hmm. so i could attach to those things it just it, everything started making sense Cool. Really like a reconnection for me right there. Yeah. yeah. I think that's important. I mean, however one gets that um, kind of revelation mm -hmm. through, you know, those type of techniques that you used or counseling or like I said, therapy or something, or just kind of on your own and being motivated, watching different things. I mean, we live in this world where, yes, you can go all the way around the world and you can find what you're looking for at the top of a button and um it's important at the top and the click and the right and it's just important that um when you want it you know and you want to do better th there is help out there um it doesn't cost you anything and that's important for i think everybody to really go through is that you know like finding out what do you want in your life what do you what do you want you know like what is um your purpose here and everybody does have a person purpose understanding that is is the way to um i think this the, what you're talking about inward journey or just kind of a way to um be free in a sense and um be able to live like really live and uh deal with the past so that you can move forward yeah so um yeah. this was uh 
it was this was a topic that that came up the other day, and it was a mm -hmm. young girl. I think her name is Joviana Joe Smith in California. Right. Giovanni or something, I yeah, think it Giovanni, is. Giovanni, yeah. Yeah. So, so when I caught the article, it was kind of like my first thing was like. Like what kind of what kind of pressure does a child have to be able to say, well, I'm about to hang myself. Yeah. I'm, I'm like 14, 15, because my daughter is uh, 14, she'll be 15. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like, like, what kind of pressure are you are you going through to to feel as though this is the way out? I'm not saying like, oh, I fault you for doing what you do, but like I guess for, for me is what's what's going on? Cause I I try to communicate through text messages, images, and certain things mm -hmm. with my daughter where um, I talk, she's been paying since she was like two. Okay. So, so what I was able to do is once I could see what color she, color she was using, mm -hmm. I could attach certain emotions to those certain colors Good. to see what was going on, you know, and it was just like, that's, that was like her outlet drawing. Really good, yeah. Like, and you know, just go from there. But you know, the the, the young girl in California, like, can you can you touch on that from a a therapist perspective? Because I I don't know, I wouldn't sure. know how to approach that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I watched the video. Um, there was an interview with her mom that that I think I Fox did. Yeah. Um, and she basically said that there wasn't any real signs and she was very happy and she was posting and she would just have never thought that she um, would have done this. And I, I, I just kind of had a few more questions after I saw it because nine times out of 10, there's always some type of sign, you know, even if a child is just staying in their room more than normal, that's a sign, right? Um, the, during this whole pandemic, um, the level of conversations or just being able to um, feel like that support and safety has to be um, increased gotcha. within a parent, you know, because we're all going through this in our own way. And yeah, yeah. for kids or for young people, especially um, teenagers, um, when they're not able to go to school, when, when they lose that social connection, yeah. that's a sign right? Um, when they're only having to stay in the house and they can't go anywhere, mm -hmm. um, that's just a sign in itself that, you know, you need to check on them. You need to um, do different things. I know my agency, we're doing um, different workshops each week where we give parents really ideas and strategies that they can be doing at home. Okay. And this is really to like increase the communication and just increase the bonding and, and things like that. So one of the things what I would say is definitely to check on your young person um, multiple times a day, yeah. uh, multiple times a day. If you, if you see anybody, like more than likely people who, who kill themselves, uh, there's some sort of depression. It just doesn't come out of nowhere and someone says, I'm going to kill myself. I mean, that's just not how it works. So there had to be something that was going triggered. on yeah. that definitely triggered it, whether it was like a friend that might have said something, a boyfriend, something, something oh, had, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Um, and maybe just the mom just didn't know um, what was going on or what happened. But, um, so I would, I would say definitely check on the your young person. Um, and if they don't want to talk, I mean, that's fine. But, you know, just getting them maybe to like what you're saying. If, I'm probing, I'm sorry. I'm a no, 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 it's okay. But what you were saying, like what you're, what you're, um, with your daughter, you know, connect with them with what they like, right? So oh, yeah, young yeah. people aren't always going to talk, but you can draw or write or yeah. send a text message or send a video, um, cook together. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do when you're just, you don't just have to sit and talk kind of like how we are. Yeah. Um, if you do find like that your child is staying in the room more and they don't want to talk, um, I would absolutely reach out for, for help. Um, you can always go through your insurance company to find somebody, um, or you can just kind of Google somebody if you like, yeah, um, yeah. but that would be the next thing. And then if you feel like, you know, that they are going to harm themselves, you need to call 911 ASAP. I mean, that, that would be what I would suggest. Um, but prior to that, like I said, um, there had to be some type of sign or trigger, um, because young people just don't 
kill themselves and, and people in general they just don't kill themselves off of a whim there's a, a strategic plan in place and there had to have been some thoughts about this for some time or even that day um for her to unfortunately take her life yeah i um Cause I, I wound up seeing it was a it was a young guy that was living in Florida. I don't know if you saw. Um, okay. If I can go back and find it, I send an article. But I did a I mm -hmm. did a podcast on him. He was scheduled to go to Georgia Tech. I think in the uh, I think it was January, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. If not January last year, but okay. he wound up running in front of a train and killing himself mm -hmm. because of the pressure. He was getting ready to leave, you know, high school, going into college, but he. Yeah. Nobody was gonna take care of the family like he could, mm. even though he was playing. I'm like, damn, like I couldn't, I couldn't imagine the pressure. You know what I mean? Of of that, I didn't, I didn't have that pressure. But I know that a lot of these children do have that pressure. And yeah, I mean, they they're dealing with pressure. Um, I mean, I'm right around, I'm right around the corner in age with you, <laughs> so okay. Um, they they're dealing with more things, of course, in this internet or just social media age. Is is more than of course we oh, even had crucial. to deal with, right? So that is it's, it's crucial. It is definitely crucial. I mean, um, cyberbullying is one thing, or you know, just posting. Like I said, I work in the school, so I hear it and see it. Um, what, age, what age group? It's high school. Ah, uh, yeah, I know. They're high school students. So is that um, is that crazier than junior high? I don't know. I I, I haven't oh, okay. worked in a junior high school, oh. but yeah. But I just see how, you know, somebody posts something, somebody airdrops something. Yeah, it's over. And then everybody gets it, you know. Um, and Because I, I, it's, it's like, and I don't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. It's kind of like I always, <clears throat> I use a metaphor. Mm -hmm. If you give a child a knife, they're going to do one or two things. They either going to learn how to go and um, cut some grass or, mm -hmm. you know, cut some bread cut some wood or do what they need to do mm -hmm. or they gonna go out and try to rob and kill and harm or steal yeah i feel like that's what and it may be a bad comparison with the phone you can have a phone that you can use mm -hmm. as in the aspect of you can use it for technology purposes you can use it to to make money off of take pictures become a photographer set up a bank learn cryptocurrency yeah. or whatever but you can also use it for for harm from you know mm -hmm. family, somebody and a uh, um, promiscuous uh, way, yeah. being young, you know what I mean, sending photos, just whatever. And it's it's um like you said, I can only imagine what the youth are going so through. That, yeah, that, and that's just yeah. one layer of pressure, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you have to deal with, um, you know, and, and I, so I work in D.C., so um, just the pressure of they have to travel by themselves, right? They have to come, to, sometimes it takes them almost an hour to get this, we're at a charter school, so it's not right up the street. Um, take a couple buses and train to get to school. So that's one element that that we've or I've never had to even think about um, when going to school. Um, a lot of these kids are supervising themselves or supervising okay. younger children, right? They're siblings, and they're in charge of them. So um, that's another layer. And then and then we talk about just basic needs being met. You know, um, a lot of our, our youth are low income and live in high crime areas. Mm -hmm. That's another layer. And then they try to come to school and they expect them to sit in a classroom for an hour plus and do some work or for the whole day and not act out. I mean, it's really what, setting them up to fail in a sense. No, and then it's like, so now that that's making sense with the video, I'm going to repost it on my page where the young guy was saying, okay. Look, I'm doing work. I got. I'm doing work for like four or five hours. Mm -hmm. I'm literally sitting here doing work. Mm -hmm. and I can't even complete. I'm not even. I'm not even uh, scratching the surface on what I got to get done. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw. I I posted that he on my page. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, God, you know, like. And he's getting more and more work. Yeah, more and more work. Right. So it's kind of, it's kind of like, I never personally really liked school. You know what I mean? I felt like it was a cesspool mm -hmm. because there's certain things I know personally for me. I was uh I was great in math, so my father's an accountant, so he could okay. me, he would have me putting checks in order and doing certain things with numbers. Okay. But he never just really explained it to me like mm -hmm. what these things were. So I get to geometry class and I'm I'm averaging a hundred, 
in the class. Nice. And I asked my teacher, like, all right, I'm doing all this geometry. Why the fuck am I doing? You know, like that's mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. me being me being a, a 10th grade, 11th grade, like, I'm in this class. What am I doing this for? What am I learning this for? Right. So with with no response, mm-hmm. I'm like, man, why the fuck am I here? So the the it's like mm-hmm. I don't even feel like the teacher's value. I'm not saying all of them. Yeah. But I don't think because the teacher was was of another ethnicity. Yeah. Didn't value the conversation as if I had somebody that favored me in flavor, mm-hmm. me and my skin tone. Mm-hmm. I feel like they would have directed me and saying, like, look, you see this, you see this wall that you're walking through? That's geometry. Mm-hmm. You out there playing basketball, that's geometry. The shirt you got on, yeah. your eye, you know, like. And that like definitely step, helps. I mean, yeah. be able to connect with your teacher. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's it's definitely important and it's definitely necessary. And um, for these young people, when they feel like they're not even gonna be able to use this, like what's the point um, of, of all of this? Um, and then school, the system in itself, you know, is they have to meet these certain deadlines and these certain numbers and, and all of this. It puts a lot of just pressure, what we're talking about, onto the kids with testing and, you know, having to complete all of this work. It's, it, I, I was shocked going into the schools um, and knowing how much testing that they have to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they're used to it. In the sense, I mean, for my school, from my perspective, um, they, they seem somewhat used to it, you know, because they've been doing this. But I just never remember half of the I testing that they have to do. I just, and, I, just um, don't, I just don't see what is, I don't see what is going towards because I've always been yeah. in a frame of, all right, I know that sometimes i learn with music playing in the background mm-hmm. i need some music playing while i'm doing work some right. people some people can sit there and, and literally like sit there and mm-hmm. do stuff. i might need to get up and write on the board and get this out of my head because that's how i see yeah some people may need to be active so it's just like to me that 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 system and way of doing things is outdated like mm-hmm. and yeah part of me feel like this change that's going on the parents were not prepared, the teachers mm-hmm. were not prepared, the students were not prepared. And it's like, I'm, I've been saying like, I don't even think, part of me has been feeling like, I don't even think the kids gonna even go back to school. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. it's definitely not gonna be how it was. Yeah, how it was. That we all have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And- Even it, college too. College too. So the, it, it's almost like a double-edged sword. So it's a, it's kind of a good thing because we we know that the system isn't always geared toward well i say some schools are but not for the for the most part the system is not preparing them for what they actually need in life i mean and i think that's just a true statement in general um so it is a somewhat of a double-edged sword but it's like you know now the burden is put on to the parents and caregivers to to teach when they might not have the education they might not have the resources they may have to still go to work you know, so they're still putting this, or and then the kids have to do it themselves. So they're put in this situation where you know they are, in a sense, having to structure their day out themselves and be responsible for this work that they really didn't care about in the first place. Right. That's why I like Derek Grace with the um, unlearn and relearn. I, I got them with the um, the unlearn and relearn, but mm-hmm. he said adversity builds character. That was one of the topics. Mm-hmm. That, he has a tattoo on his on his forehead, and uh, yeah. just the the way he's approaching it and saying, I think you have to approach it from a a, a wolf standpoint, meaning that if I don't if I don't come aggressive on saying like my child needs to learn this 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 right. this, this before they even get out of my house, because I know I'm noticing that a lot of people like if my child hit 18, I got to get the hell on, but it's like you weren't even prepared to go and deal with the mm-hmm. world. What the hell you think this 18 year old gonna do yeah. with no car, no mm-hmm. license, no, no car job. Yeah. Of laws, no, mm-hmm. no, you know, you can't pay a phone bill, has never paid a phone bill. Right. Never, never had that responsibility. You just gonna throw them in the ocean to swim. To swim yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so and and that's what kind of what I was alluding to is just that we have this opportunity to be able to pour into our young people, but 
if you don't have the mindset or the parents are dealing with all this other stuff within our community, I mean, we have so much to have to worry about. Um, it just becomes exhausting, right? And where do you find the time, the energy to really um, to educate when you don't want to or you just don't feel that, see the value in it? So, you know, I think that this is good that we're having these platforms so that we can have this conversation and really um, get to the parents to because this is a new normal. This is, this is not, it's not going to go back to how it was. So that's, what are we going to do with this now? And that's, and that's, so it's part of like the, the question. And then it's also is like, it's like you saying, there's layers to things. Mm -hmm. so, so this, this is kind of taking me back to when I was talking to my pops, like as a child, I'm like, man, I got 41st cousins. I'm like, all right, dad, you in the count. Hey man, run this game down to all my cousins so that way they understand what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. That's how I tried. So I'm like, if this how I tried, you need to make some money. You just made all the money that you was looking forward to making. And it's like, I'm a kid saying this. Mm -hmm. That's where it was like Derek with Derek Grace put together with the in-home banking. Mm -hmm. was like, damn, this is something that I was trying to show my yeah. folks, but the the I guess the level of understanding wasn't there because we aren't taught, it's like, conversation I had again. People relative to me here in America, we aren't taught to work as a collective. Yeah. We're taught to work individually. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time to work as a collective, we start, we go to work and we learn to work as a collective at that mm -hmm. point versus yeah. working as a collective at home. So it's like, I've been working towards changing the directions of things. Like I said, with my homeboys from college, mm -hmm. my brother and sister, and now it's like, I got some of my cousins are starting to like latch on to what I'm saying. Right. But I did want to, and you kind of answered it like, and you, I don't think we touched on it, but why are parents fearing for their children's mental health during this pandemic? Well, I mean, um, you know, mental health, it can, um, a lot, a lot, well, I say, I should say this. So um, mental health diagnoses or just mental health issues um could have already been there right so um behavior issues depression anxiety feeling very overwhelmed about different things whole host of different kind of behaviors could have already been going on but now that you've taken away what we've already talked about is their social interaction their um, accountability from others um structure um uh even maybe some of the homeboys too or yeah home girls you know mm-hmm yeah, so the different interactions that they've had, you know, um, and having them put them and isolate them in a sense with people that or family members that um, might have their own mental health issues or just, you know, they have their own family issues in a sense, it okay. gets exacerbated, right? So um, now more mental health issues are going to either come about or they're just going to be more prevalent because you see it now, you don't have an outlet. They don't have an outlet to, to get out this uh, behavior or, or be able to really um, communicate with, with who they need to communicate with. So it's, it's definitely going to be um, a rise in probably more suicides, probably more depression, um, just a lot of mental health issues in general because of all, you gotta think about just everything that they're taking away. Yeah. Meaning like- You gotta have a substitute. You, yeah, you have to. And we can't even go to, like, the movies. You can't. Go to, <laughs> you know what I mean? We can't even can't go, go to the movies. Yeah. We can't do anything. Well, I shouldn't say we can't do anything, but um, what could have been fun for young people or just, you know. No at all. Yeah. There's, there's that has been eliminated. So my job and what I'm trying to really push is, you know, there are a whole host of other things that can be still done. Yeah. and really trying to take control of what we have control of. Because if we sit and talk about everything that is going wrong or everything that we don't have control over and the yeah. government's doing this and, you know, we can't go back to work and, and just kind of like the things that um, we have no control over, it is going to create something within us that then will uh, eventually be some type of mental health issue because you know, you're focusing on the wrong thing. So really focusing on what is important and what we can really take this time and produce something and be somewhat productive is, is the goal or I guess the, the, um, 
the avenue that I'm trying to to push. To, to push. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, think, I think that's dope because like what I've been doing personally, like I'm a I'm a master barber by trade, but I also okay. work at Amazon part time. But mm. what I've been looking at is okay, what skills can I learn and develop? I learn how to um build video games. Okay. Learning some coding and I've been doing some farming too. Mm-hmm. So it's just more or less like, and even recording and writing and editing. So it's just like, I'm finding time to do these things when I'm yeah. you know, on my downtime. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you said, the, the average things that were going on, like it's affected, it's affected my life. Mm-hmm. And, and they're actually talking about going back in the shop to, um, Friday. And I'm like, okay. man, the hell with that. I'm not, I'm not risking my, my life and well. Oh, you're that. in Atlanta? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not per se afraid because I'm big on health, meaning like um, the immune system being being up to par, cleaning mm-hmm. myself out, you know what I mean, eating right. But it's like my, my clients may not may not understand that. Right. But I'm like I'm willing to I'm willing to sacrifice even if I gotta go two weeks to a month before I get back in there. I'm not, yeah. I'm, not I'm not in a rush to get in there. Man. I ain't. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would. Um, Waited out for a little bit longer. It just seems suspect that they kind of named all, all the things that all, all us all black it. folks would be able to to go to. Sure. So I will wait it out. Um, but I'm glad you brought up just about boosting your immune system because most people um, don't know that though. Yeah, I mean they're not talking about it either. So um, one thing we have control over is is what we put in our bodies. And reason why um i mean the numbers seem very skewed and suspect and just in general how many people do have this uh, virus but one thing that is is true is that um our culture suffers from a lot of predisposed conditions heart disease high blood pressure diabetes of course and um if something were to come like a coronavirus into your system your body wouldn't be able to fight it off so one thing that you can do and and i'm a big proponent of is boosting your immune system and you are what you eat health as well so um mm -hmm. because i I, I had a um one of my elders is a vegan okay years ago i'm i'm going out learning how to um pick pick uh you know leaves out in the wild Mm -hmm. learning about um yellow dog cayenne pepper blueberries you know just certain certain things to where it's like now i'm glad i did spend that time Mm -hmm. when everybody was calling me crazy Mm -hmm. now y'all calling me on the phone like hey bro um what can i do and yeah some blueberries go drink you know go drink some water and that's when i'm from memphis okay it was like well um they you know they really been hitting me up lately i'm like look drink some water go get some juice Mm -hmm. matter of fact go buy a juice Right. So any, I mean, and I agree. Um, I've been vegan now. It'll be three years in August. And um, and my mom, I, I kind of got put on. So I knew I was going to be. My mom, just my whole life has been in a sense. So it was just a matter of time before I went back to it. But, um, you know, that is something that, that is needed, you know, for us to really like um, grow into to be more of and and it it creates clarity within the mind too so mm-hmm. you know if whatever you're eating or consuming and and all of that it's it's clearing or it's um i should say it's polluting in a sense of course um how you think and then ultimately how you will behave so it kind of is all connected not kind of but it is it is, yeah. it is definitely all connected to um you know, your thoughts, your feelings and behaviors, of course, and what you eat too. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely a, a topic that needs to be discussed is preventative care and what we can do to, um, you know, make ourselves better so that we won't be susceptible to any type of disease. So um, I saw a post that was, it said, uh, talk about our story, changing the education and mental health. Was that, you think that's a topic too, too, um, what was it? Um, talk about our story changing the education and mental health. I saw you, okay. you, 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 uh, you kind of touched on it. I don't know if that was like, 
you had a book or something out or or whatnot but yeah so i i do um so i i wrote a uh children's activity workbook and it's really name of it? it's um here i got it right here um how i can control my feelings in 30 days all right and it's an activity workbook that um for 30 days um young people and it's really like I, I, I put on there eight to 14, but it's really um, wherever developmentally they are. So I've had as young as five years old as, and then as, as um, old as maybe like 16 um, complete the book. But, can use it. Say it again? I think a 20 year old can use it too. Yeah, I mean, parents could definitely benefit from it. So it's really 30 days of short tasks. I mean, it's not anything in it. Um, I'm right um that's going to take them a long time to to complete but within that 30 days um you know they're learning 20 feeling words and they're really learning it, um what how what they mean defining it and how to apply it appropriately and really like working through any behaviors that or how responses uh, appropriate and inappropriate that they've done in the past and really finding ways to um, control themselves uh, they're learning discipline about family relationships so it's jam-packed with um, activities I know that to connect with young people um, you have to make it fun and creative and that is what I did um, it's and it's all designed um, on purpose to really have um, images and topics that can be relatable to our culture and our community. Mm -hmm. So that, um, and that's the reason why I wrote it is because there wasn't anything out there like that. And I always I had know. to. I already know. And that's a line. Yeah. Like, so what, I, what I'm going to need from you is a video. Of mm -hmm. you saying, like, here's my book. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to take the video and post it, link in the bio. You know what I mean? Because it's just. Yep. I think it's necessary and, mm -hmm. and like I'm glad that I came across the page because I feel like I'm winning personally even mm -hmm. though I haven't had a session with you but I'm like <laughs> hey look I'm gonna figure out how to make this happen but um I got you yeah I think it's, I think it's um I think it's vital you know what I mean because mm -hmm. it's like I'm a I'm a barber and I'm a therapist mm -hmm. I'm a psychologist yeah because i you know like my one of one of my slogans in the, in the more than a haircut podcast is it's more than a haircut mm -hmm. i've had guys sit in my chair and they might not share some of the things to the world that they sharing with me right or they may not have heard of bitcoin mm -hmm. but they get involved in bitcoin and now since you get in at a certain point you've made a ample amount of money in that time frame yeah you might you might you might meet somebody through coming in in a barbershop that'll get you a job. So that's I feel like that's an assist. Yeah. My part to say, look, but for um, and this is I guess this is me to you and and also you to me, like now. So how important is a therapist to therapy? Mm -hmm. How how do you reset and or recover in your downtime? Okay, so that's a good question. So um, everybody needs somebody to talk to. Um, even I should have a therapist, and I keep saying it, but I haven't gotten one yet. Every hey, I'm, all, a, I'm available. Okay, I'm all the all, all of my coworkers. I, I, I wouldn't even know what the hell to do. <laughs> but I, all of my coworkers have therapists, so it is just in, essential to have somebody really to process with when things because everybody has issues, right? And, know, and everybody know. goes through things and. Um, it's always good to really have that other person to bounce things off of. So even, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have a therapist, but um, it helps because there's, a, of course, a, a strategy and there's, there's techniques behind um, talking to somebody and communicating and getting them to open up and really helping them through um, situations um, in, in a way that's going to be long lasting. So there is a technique to all of it. But um, I, I would say what you're doing, um, you have a gift in itself, right? So me being able, us being able to connect with people, not everybody can do that. Not everybody feels comfortable in, in talking to people. So I, I think that, you know, you being who you are to, to so many people, um, you're already doing 
what somebody you're already giving to to somebody what they might need or, or might not want to talk to a therapist about you know being able to get out how you feel is that is the the main part right that is the important part you know not to hold things in because when you hold things in of course then it festers and and um and then you eventually either blow up or you or you hold it in and then you get to a point where you, you're talking about you want to kill yourself so i mean i don't think i'll do that but i, I yeah I, I understand what you're saying though. right so you either act out or you or the opposite is you hold it in and then um you either try to harm yourself or to get out that pain right yeah. so um you know and and how to reset that was the other question right yeah how to reset like what is your reset what is your recovery from you know like going through a session or whatnot like once you because i know you gotta you gotta be able to go swimming you might say i'm about to go paint i'm about to drink mm -hmm. go paint I'm yeah to travel you know what i mean i know it's some it's gotta be some yeah so self-care is is huge right so especially with people uh, a helping profession um self-care has to be on the top of the list so um one thing that is major in my life is i do a boot camp and it's okay. an intensive like um workout session um that we were doing outside but of course now we're doing it virtually yeah um so that that's one thing that definitely helps but just exercising getting out walking um just doing different um workouts is is helpful but self-care in general um so it, it looks like very different for for different people or whatever kind of works for you but being able to talk i mean this right here is therapeutic yeah, for yeah. Me, <laughs> in a sense um i love talking about what i do so it it helps right um but uh writing things down or listening to music what you were saying or painting um what you talked about um just finding something that it takes your mind off of maybe some of your the pressure or some issues or just kind of maybe some stress and um, where you can feel uh creative where you can laugh you know you can have fun or you feel this sense I of i laugh for myself so that's yeah me too <laughs> um but just like taking a shower you know just kind of relaxing yourself and getting yourself into a calm state i know i know i'm helpful. you off as a joke but they went about all the goddamn tissue <laughs> they, they <laughs> i know <laughs> i know i know i'm just kidding <laughs> but, but um let's and I, I gotta like I don't I don't I won't call this like a um, quick questions, but mm -hmm. let, let's say I I have PTSD. I feel okay. like okay, okay. Um, just from just from certain situations where um a guy ran up on me with a with a Glock. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, bro, let me use your phone. I need to I need to call somebody. I need to call. Mm -hmm. call. I'm like, in my mind, I'm, I'm like. Nigga, I don't even know who you are. Like, you can keep it pushing. Like, mm -hmm. but I'm not even. I'm not even in my head thinking. Like, man, dude got a gun in his hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just from, I think it's just from being where I'm from, and not not that we on top of each other, but it's just a mentality where where I'm where you know in Memphis. Okay. I just know that certain things have triggered things to where it's like I could have lost my life right there over just not letting letting the guy mm -hmm. on my phone. But do wind up getting killed like later on that day. Mm -hmm. You, you know? feel like desensitized. Yeah, is that like, is that kind like, of what it was too? I, Where it didn't I, like react. You didn't have a reaction to I didn't it. Have a, I ain't have a reaction for him. It was like, bro, keep man, keep going. Yeah. You know, like, man, get the hell on. You know. But it's just like it it it, it happened a couple of you know it's it's happened like a lot mm -hmm. to where it's like. So do you find yourself like thinking about it a lot? Do you find yourself having maybe nightmares about it or just kind of like reoccurring dreams about it? I don't have um, no dreams or no nightmares, but it's like, okay. I guess it's just more or less like just, I don't, I just don't, I just, my levels, you know what I mean? Like I'm kind of numb to it to where it's like, yeah. I ain't really phased by it, you know what I mean? Well, that sounds that sounds more like like I said, just kind of being desensitized to it. Um, you know, just kind of because you've seen it a lot and it's just not affecting you in any type of way. Yeah. Um, post it might, post it might go ahead. Be my dog, right? You said what? 
it might come out though at any given time though, right? Like, I mean, like, it, it could, it could. So, so what you're talking about PTSD for some that might not know is post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. So somebody who has never experienced what you experience um, and, and trauma, like I'll say this, trauma is relative to whoever is going through it. So for your example, um, if someone, if that happened to somebody else, they could really have PTSD and, and like I said, they think about it, it's very, it's an anxiety disorder. So they're thinking about it and they're anxious about it and they're having recurring dreams and they can't sleep and their just thoughts are consumed with what has happened and they might not be able to go to the place or, or walk around or walk the same route as they might have. Um, but others, you know, like yourself, you were not faced by it at all. So trauma right. is relative to whoever it happens to. Um, but in, in your um, scenario, it sounds like you're more... Um, uh, desensitized to it and not that it might not come out later but just that um, you might want to kind of reflect on maybe like the first time you might have felt you, you saw something like that or um, like how did you feel the first time that something like that happened um, because there had to be some type of reaction um, before yeah, I mean, you... it, it, it was but it's kind of like so another dude got killed in the building I was staying in then mm -hmm. like, I'm at the barbershop and and a, and a whole other situation went on. It's just like, you know, could have got could have got shot up then. And mm -hmm. even from there, I went to like it was a Lil Wayne concert that was at A three C here in Atlanta. Mm. And um, I had a panic attack. Mm, okay. Like I never experienced it before, but it was just like I had to literally lay on the ground for like mm. thirty minutes to catch my breath, like away from the scene that was going on. Yeah, it's like I do find myself now not wanting to go around crowds and be isolated. And then, like, even in isolation, it's kind of like, man, fuck it. I don't want to be around. You know, I just rather be by myself and just be. Gotcha. You know, so, so it sounds like it has affected you um, in a way where, and so a panic, panic um, attacks or it has to do with anxiety of two, two, of course, right? So um, it, that might whatever situation that incident that you were in it triggered something in you that of course that you feeling anxious that it's it's too much or you feel yeah. overwhelmed to even um like response or process through it so your body kind of goes into this flight yeah, um yeah. fight or flight so you, you, your body isn't being able to respond to it in a way that you know you feel comfortable so i would suggest just um really kind of like looking back in those situations to see you know, like where kind of maybe that had started or like maybe the first time you had a panic attack um, or and like, or... I, I've never had a panic, like... Oh, that, that was only one? That was, on, that was the first time, but it was like, I was like, it was like an out-of-body, uh, an out-of-body mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. for, for how I was trying to get away. Just um, dr feeling like I was drenched in sweat. Like it was just, mm -hmm. I hurt my knees. So you haven't had one since? No, nah, I ain't had, I ain't had none since, but it's just more or less like, I, um, it's not like a, a, a paranoid feeling, but like I said, I might paint, I might draw. Anxious, yeah. You know what I'm saying, but it's just, yeah. it's just. So that's a healthy outlet for you to to deal with it. But I would just kind of like look back to um, those first type situations or incidents that you witnessed. Um, if you can remember, go back and, and to them and kind of like either write it down, like how you felt, what you saw. Um, did you, or did you feel safe? Like, even though you might have saw that, um, did, were you able to tell a parent about it? Did you feel safe afterwards? Yeah. Um, and things like that to, to kind of really just kind of process through, or at least get your feelings out about that. Yeah. And then really like take that and, um, you know, and you can do affirmations to yourself. Um, that can be helpful. You can, um, talk to your parent about it, you know, like I've been through this and, yeah. You know, if for some reason they weren't there for you, you know, you can. Oh yeah, that's, and and I think like, cause now it made me think about another incident that I had when I was in Memphis, and um, mm -hmm. it was almost like, it's like I saw I uh, I pull up and I it's like I saw it before it happened. I usually mm -hmm. see stuff like that, and it was like, I I get out of my car and I'm like, hey man, it's some some fuck shit about to go on. I'm just saying this to myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, as soon as I said that, it's like I got out the car and I was me and my homeboy and a dude wound up pulling a uh, pulling a gun on me and it was just like, 
Mm. And I just said this shit. And the way it, the way it happened, it happened quick. And it was like, man, it's, it's you know, I didn't, I never, I never talked, you know what I'm like? I never talked or discussed it even with my, with my folks. And I know mm-hmm. I definitely need to, to, to do yeah. it. Yeah, let them know because they, um, your mom and mom and dad, yeah, you like yeah, I ain't, yeah, I ain't talk. It's like, shit, I just it's yeah, something that I am by. The, I think the only person that really just knew was my brother. You know what I mean? Okay. And then, yeah, I would suggest just talking to them about it, um, just to kind of get that out. They are your parents, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure yeah. that they would they would want to know that you went through that and it, it affected you. You know, like uh, even if it even down the line after it happened so many times. Um, you know, just letting them know kind of uh, that that happened and that's what you are going through. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I got a few more questions. Sure. Um, so what happens in a therapy consultation? So. <laughs> is, that, is that something you could, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So. To a depth? So. Um, so typically how therapy, how therapy works is you, um, you have what's called, to start the process, you have what's called the intake process and you sign some consents and basically, you know, therapy is voluntary. You know, if you want to end at any point, you can. Um, it's all kind of driven by what you want. Um, and in DC, um, everything pretty much is paid through, for, um, through insurance. Okay. Um, but you can pay out of pocket too. So that kind of is just mainly the, the, well, and I, and I say this, so everything is confidential, um, with your therapist, unless you say that you're going to harm yourself, you're going to kill yourself, you're going to kill someone else. Um, and, or, uh, there's child abuse or elder abuse. So I make sure that I let my clients know that, um, from the beginning, because you don't want them to say, you know, down the line, um, my mom punched me in my face and then you might have to, or repeatedly punches me in my face, I should say that. And then you have to call and then they're shocked by it. So, um, those would be the only times that you would have to, or I would have to, um, uh, let the CPS or authorities know, um, and break confidentiality. So then the next step is, um, really to get to know where I can help, you know, like what, is going on why are you seeking out why do you feel like you need help so we go through a lot of different questions about um the past um of course and it has to do with just like um family like um living living situation and how you get along with those those people and um any traumas any grief and loss and any um um, okay um 16 people last year that was like wow Wow. Yeah. Um, but physical development is part of it too. Like, was there any trauma or did, like when you were in the womb, does, did your mom go through any trauma or was there any health complications afterwards is important to know. Um, is there a history of, of mental health issues in the family, substance abuse issues in the family is part of the intake process. Um, what else? Any like, uh child and family services involvement so it's just kind of like getting a, a real um general or, or i shouldn't say general but very specific um um assessment of of the past so then after that it's really about um kind of building trust and rapport with with the client and um and and we talk about goals too so it's very that's, structured that's in a way yeah that's where, what i was gonna ask you like how mm-hmm. would, you, would you uh how often would you see me and for how long? And then the counseling goes. So it's, so you cool. Yeah. So uh, typically therapy is like once a week for an hour, but, um, since I, I'm contracted to work at the school. So I would see the kids more because they're actually there. And, um, so I can see the kids up to five times a week, but it, it just has to be a reason for that. So I like to see my, my kids at least twice a week, um, for probably about an hour. Um, kids are a little bit different than adults because their attention span is, is much, um, uh, smaller. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so, so then, um, 
you know, you just kind of, so there's goals. So it's called treatment plan is created um, between the both of us. You know, like I said, it's very driven by the client. So, you, so that's like the homework. Well, no, that's, that's kind of like the structured plan that we would work uh, through for six months. Our treatment plans oh, okay, okay. last for six months. And you tell me like, what are your goals? Like, what do you want to work on? What do you, why are you coming here? You know, I don't want to waste your time. I don't want you to waste my time. What do you need help with? So if you're, you're saying you want help with PTSD sure. or not having panic attacks anymore, that would be your goal. Okay. Um, and typically there's like three goals that are on a treatment plan. And then after six months, we revisit it. Are you, do you see a change in it? Do you feel like you, you don't need it anymore, or this goal anymore? So once your goals are met, then that's kind of when therapy is over. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and it's probably my last question. I, I okay. talk all damn night, as you can see. Go ahead. But, um, how do I prepare for my first session, like as a, as a client? Like, how would I prepare? So I, I think that just being um, open um, to the whole process, right? So I think um, who your therapist is, is going to be very important. So I think that if you can do your research, if you can't just um, go to the session, if you feel like that's not a right fit for you, you like genuinely feel like that person is, is for you, yeah. um, then you, you can just kind of move forward. But just being open about, what this whole process is knowing that you're going to have to probably talk about some things that you might not want to, um, but it's really going to help you. And, and I, and I try to tell that from the beginning with all of my clients is that, you know, there are going to be some hard times in therapy, you know, you're going to have to, yeah, you might cry. You're going to hate me at times, all of that, but this is, (laughs) but you, you mean, though. I know what you mean. Right. I mean, these are kids. So like they're, they, hate me and love me at the same time but um because I hold them accountable and that's the whole point of is like I'm going to hold you accountable um and I'm going to confront you on some things if if need be and this is all to help you you know like I genuinely love what I do and um and hopefully that comes across and and if if it doesn't then you have that option to to move on with someone else but you know, just, just kind of being open and um, understanding that there's going to be some hard times, but the light at the end of the tunnel is what you're hopefully uh, motivated with and encouraged with to really get that out and, um, and be able to, to grow and to, to be free, kind of what I was saying earlier, be free of, of your past. And it all has to do with the past. Everybody, you know, like you cannot move forward unless you deal with the past. It's, yeah. It's all connected. I definitely feel you on that. And um, I guess, like, would you suggest some, some, I guess, some books or something that I could personally read that, that I may be able to help a few of the clients out? Because I'm, you know, like I said, I'm a barber and I'm, a, I'm also a therapist too, in a sense. Like, mm-hmm. they talking to me. Yeah. They're with me. So I'm, I'm already reading all the time anyway. Okay. I'm already doing, doing certain things, but like, just some basic, some basic stuff that I may be able to do. Just, well, I mean, I, I think like you don't even have to, I mean, I guess if you want to read different books, I don't have any like, that I can think of off, offhand I guess, I guess. Um, titles that, and I'd have to look them up and I can always send them to you. But just, um, just kind of doing your research. I, I think that, you know, you just using Google or just using YouTube mm-hmm. and um, figuring out strategies. I, I think that w- that's the best thing right because a book i mean a books can give you strategies i'm not saying they, they can't can. they, they can but it still gotta be like because it's the book is not gonna it's not gonna be shaped and mold after each person right. so I, I feel what you're saying like it right might me, it might give me a little insight a little structure yeah and you can go right to youtube watch a three minute video that you might have had to take you know x amount of days to even read um that you can really give to your your clients right away and and that's i think that you are in a place where you need things in a, in a quick way. Cause one, you might not know who's coming in and, and things like that, but just having something that's going to be readily, readily available that you can give them. Well, a, schedule, a schedule helps though. I mean, like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I kind of know who's, who's coming in. Okay. Like okay. But yeah, I, I would just kind of um, just put in maybe like uh, maybe some of this issues or problems that somebody might have and how to deal with, um, 
uh, grief and loss. You know, what are some ways that adults can can deal with grief and loss? Um, how to help somebody with um, going through a divorce? Okay. What can you, you know what I mean? What can you say? Or, or how do you deal with somebody who is dealing with PTSD? Yeah. Um, I think that that would, that is, Someday. I mean, it, it's, it's easy. I think that's an easier way for you to really um, get the information and in a quick and, and a lot of different topics too, that you'll be able to cover. All right. So yeah. um, I'm not going to take no, any more of your time, but I, will, <laughs> I want you to tell the people like, Either where they can follow you, okay. Um, you know, Instagram or you if you have a YouTube, so they can you know so they can follow along and follow what you got going. And I also share on my page, so okay, you know, people too. Sure. So um, I'm on Instagram as I am Alexis Alton, A L E X I S A L T O N. No S in my name. Everybody wants to put an S in my name. It's I am Alexis Alton on Instagram and Facebook, I, um, it's just Alexis Alton on Facebook. No, I am. Okay. I don't have YouTube yet, but that is to come. So um, just we, follow we my- that. We need that. Yeah, I know, and I need to do it. So just follow my social media and you'll definitely see, be on the lookout for that because that's something to come. If you want to purchase my book, um, How to Control My Feelings in 30 Days, uh, you can go to Amazon and type in my name, Alexis Alton, or type in the, the book title, but it's probably easier to just type in my name. Or you can go on to my website, which is alexisalton.com. And I will have all this information available so you can see it. So okay. you can follow this woman and you can buy the, you know, support the book. Please do. It's, and, and, I, and I wrote the book, so I, I, I kind of am biased, but the book this activity workbook, everybody, every kid should have it. It's not just for somebody who is, who is having behavior issues. It's literally um, a way to communicate. And it, it's definitely a tool that is necessary for all young people to really be able to utilize, especially now. This is this time that we're living in. It's, it's unlike no other. We've never dealt with anything like this. And it is important to keep that conversation going, to be able to have those um those that dialogue with your young person and really for them to connect with how they feel about everything you know about everything that's going on and really use the language that's going to um to help them and and support them um through through this yeah my mom and so, i was just talking about that like uh-huh there's never been a time like this never i, I can't remember when things stopped like this ever never ever the whole world never the whole world so it, the time is now um, we got to get our house in order just kind of what you were talking about um it really starts with every household you know so um, what you want to change figure it out write it down and um, start working on it we got time yeah. and if you don't have time figure out where you can find some time because um turn off the tv turn you know whatever you got to do make oh. time so that your your house can be in order and when i say in order really like you know what do you want just kind of what we we're talking about before figuring out what you want for you for your for your family how do you want to live um these are questions that that have to be answered and can be you know like we're not here to struggle we haven't been placed on this earth to to go through all of this turmoil that we are we are destined for greatness and we really just have to find that within so um take that time while we have it um, to really figure out that inward journey that you were talking about. I definitely appreciate it. Like, mm -hmm. It's already architect, uh, and it's more than a haircut podcast. You got to go over it. It's a haircut, yes. But, uh, but I, like, again, I appreciate you taking the time out, answering my, uh, my message. Sure. Hopefully it was, it was helpful. Oh, yeah. It's, um, you got to come back on for a round two. Eventually. Okay. But, um, yeah. So let me know. Yeah. It's, I think it's necessary, and I do want to. Um, I do want to help promote things on on the HWP Media page too. So okay, it, it's it's needed and it's necessary, and I haven't heard a lot of people mm -hmm. that are not preparing for that. I think yeah, it's gonna be some. You know, it's a it's a it's a space, and it's much need for therapy. Yeah, I mean, this is this is an issue that's going to this pandemic. It's going to have long lasting effects. 
But you know, um, you know what though? I did mm -hmm. I did say that um I feel like in the next 10 years that we would need therapy. I was saying this like four years mm -hmm. ago. Because mm -hmm. just of how I was seeing how people were interacting and acting based on what, what they see from a picture from a website yeah. or certain things. And it's like the mm -hmm. interactions are totally different to where yeah. people mm -hmm. don't need rehab from being on the game or being on in front of a computer or being in front yeah. of the phone all day and, and reconnecting back to what's natural. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I'm not going nowhere. My industry isn't going anywhere. Like never. <laughs> if anything, like, we just like got a whole bunch problem. of more customers. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's. I think y'all about to have an overload of customers. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna become a therapist. I just need my license. Yeah. All right, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. Nah, yeah. I appreciate you. you know? Appreciate you. Appreciate you too. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. It'll be easy. All right. Take care. I'll talk to you next time. All right. All right.